So in this problem we're going to do another integration by parts but let's also just make it a definite integral to just to make things a little bit a little bit different than the last problem. So again recall the integration by parts formula says the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Okay so in this problem I see an ln of x and you have to be careful kind of visually looking at it you see an x squared but really this is 1 over x squared so we'll have to pick u to either be ln of x or we'll have to pick u to be 1 over x squared in my problem again as a rule of thumb and you know it's not a an always correct rule but we'll pick u to be the thing that gets more simple when you take the derivative of it so if you think about 1 over x squared, that's equivalent to x to the negative second. Well, the derivative of x to the negative second will be negative 2 x to the negative third. All right, you know, it definitely changes. I don't know that that's better. The ln of x, when you take the derivative of that, though, will become 1 over x. And I kind of like that. You know, there's something about lns I don't like. And if I make it into 1 over x, you know, something to think about is you also have these other powers of x floating around. Maybe something will cancel out. So I'm going to pick u to be ln of x. I'll pick du to be, well, not pick. If you use ln of x, du becomes 1 over x dx. That means I'm picking dv to be the 1 over x squared, or x to the negative second dx term and if you find the antiderivative of x to the negative second we'll get x to the negative first divided by 1 or negative 1 over x okay so let's plug all this stuff in here it says if I use my integration by parts formula it says we'll get u, which is ln of x. It says we'll multiply that by v. Okay, so here's v. I'll pull the negative out front and just make it 1 over x. And now the idea is, since this is a definite integral, I'll put my upper and lower limit in there. And we could evaluate this part just like normal. Plugging in the upper limit, subtracting away the lower limit minus now I still have an integral left over it's going to be from 1 to 2 same limits of integration of v du so v is negative 1 over x du is positive 1 over x if I pull this negative out front I'm going to get a positive 1 over x squared but again 1 over x squared is the same thing as x to the negative second dx Okay, so we're getting pretty close here. I'm still not going to evaluate this part just yet. I usually save it till the end. And I've seen some confusion in the past. People feel like we're doing some sort of substituting and the limits of integration should change. But notice my variables never change. I always keep x's in the problem, which means I should always keep my original limits of integration in the problem as well. Okay, so the negative ln of x 1 over x from 1 to 2 is going to drop right down. Again, if I integrate x to the negative second, well, I already did that up here. It says I get negative 1 over x, so that's going to make the positive into a negative 1 over x from 1 to 2. And now all I have to do is plug in my upper and lower limits. And another little trick, I don't know if it makes life any easier or not, I used to always do it. Well, I still do it. I just kind of write my integrals all together and then put my limits of integration way out to the side. So again, I don't know, maybe technically I should put this in brackets or something to indicate that I have to plug the limits into the entire integral. Okay, here we go. I'm going to plug in the upper limit now. If I plug in 2, I'll get negative ln of 2 times 1 half minus 1 over 2 there's the upper limit 
and then I'll subtract away the lower limit. I'll get negative ln of 1 times 1 over 1 and then I'll subtract away 1 over 1 from that. Make sure all my parentheses are in there. I think they are. And recall that ln of 1 equals 0. So this whole term is going to cancel out anyway. And, you know, negative ln of 2 is not without a calculator you can't really do much simplification to ln of 2 so I would leave this term alone certainly if I had to clean it up I would distribute get a positive one on the right hand side add that to the negative one half but that's pretty much the the idea on these so you do them just like normal use your regular integration by parts stuff on them and just remember that you just have to plug in your limits of integration as you go along so I hope this problem makes a little sense. Again, um, integration by parts can get pretty tricky, so these definitely are some fairly straightforward examples, but I hope they help.